You've been speaking with some amazing yeah, people. The, the thing is, um, I was at MEDEF, which is obviously a French conference for French businesses and French industries. But of course, the top one of the topics du jour was Brexit. It's oh, unavoidable. You speak German. And, and German as well. <laughs> um, but, but look, we are getting, I think we are getting to crunch time. I mean, we said this, we've been here a hundred times before, but we really are getting to crunch time as far as the Brexit negotiations are concerned. We thought that the deadline was October. It looks like it's now moving back towards November, but there does appear to be somewhat of a softening of a tone coming from Michel Barnier, and we heard that, we just listened to uh, what he said, and that they would be willing to negotiate a special type of agreement with the UK, an unprecedented type of agreement. So at least, finally, it's taken, what, more than two years now to get to that point, to be an understanding that there needs to be a special relationship constructed uh, with the, the future relationship with the UK. Um, but I think, look, we are getting to that crunch time now, and I had the opportunity to speak with the French finance minister, Bruno Le Maire, yesterday at the conference. And I picked up on the remarks made by President Macron just a couple of days ago, where he said that the relationship and preserving the relationship with Europe will always take precedence over any type of trading relationship with the UK. So I asked Mr. Le Maire, what type of message are you sending to the British government? Let's take a listen. I think that... Um we are all willing to avoid a hard Brexit. And um, I'm deeply convinced that it is in the interest of both the UK and all European countries to pave the way for a good compromise between the UK and European countries. But we have someone who is in charge of that negotiation. He's doing well. That's Michel Barnier. So I'm really confident that Michel Barnier will, with the British government, find the right solution to avoid that hard Brexit. But everybody has also to be aware that you cannot be in and out. You cannot be out of the European construction, out of the Euro European continent, and also benefiting of all the advantages of being a full member of the European Union. If you are out of the European Union, you do not have the same position, the same rights, and the same advantages than the other member states. Right, so let's just recap the main points of what he said. He said uh, they want to, all sides should try to avoid a hard Brexit, so nothing really new there. He says that it's an all sides interest to compromise. That is slight softening of tone in line with what we heard from Michel Barnier as well. Um, he said that he has full faith in Michel Barnier and full faith in that Barnier will find the right solution to avoid this hard Brexit. However, and there's always a however when it comes to anything related to Brexit discussions, the UK can't be both in and out. They can't have an a la carte type of so Brexit. They can have an a la carte, can't they? Everyone else Well, they have to have an a la carte by yeah. definition, don't they? Well, I suppose, I mean, the, there's the Norway or the Canada version. Yes. Which, which do uh, set some precedent for uh, a relationship where you do actually have some elements that you tick the box and say yes, yes, yes. But, but, but my problem with this is that the market has rallied on the prospect of the conclusion of a settlement. Mm -hmm. And yet it's... Not much, Jeff. Well, it's enough. Well, it, it's a change in to 130. But it's not but it's, gangbusters, it's like, is it? It's like listening to the teacher in Charlie Brown. You know, you're not getting any specifics or details. It's just mm. more wah, 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 wah mm. from both Barnier and Rab at this point. Mm. Give us specifics. OK, you tell us we can't have a la carte. What then does a deal mean? Is there access to the single market? Is there not? And also the question is also the longevity of this checkers deal because it seems as though it's a deal that doesn't really satisfy anyone. It has opposition within the Conservative Party. I also managed to catch up with Michael Russell, who's the Scottish Brexit Secretary oh, yes, as well. We saw some of that. It's very um, good. He was at Medef. Um, and I asked him whether or not the checkers deal would be acceptable for them because obviously mm. the Scots are pushing for it. Well, no Brexit, but if no. there had to be a Brexit, the softest type of Brexit. Uh, that could be constructed and even he was uh, pretty tepid in his response he said well I mean checkers is closer to what we're aspiring for but doesn't quite tick the boxes so this checkers deal for me is going to be a question of, of longevity whether checkers or not it can morph into a different format even softer or whether the Tory party can succeed at reining it back and taking away some of the compromises that's already been put to the table
Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.